Welcome to Lunchtime Politics, reaching you live from our global headquarters here in the nation's commercial nerve center, Lagos. This is what is coming up on the program. Separate attacks by bandits in three villages leave seven persons dead on orders injured in Faskari local government area of Katsina State. Saturday, February the 17th, ABC governorship primary election in Edo State continues to generate controversy over who is the actual winner of the exercise with comments for and against the outcome. A Labour Party in Edo State reply its governorship candidate, Olumide Akpa, aspirant rather, Olumide Akpata, following his letter to INEC raising concern over party's preparations and transparency. We begin the half-hour program with the latest security update from Katsina State, where bandits have reportedly killed six persons and burned one of the victims in Ya Nasarawa village of Faskari local government in Katsina State. The bandits, who are said to have been on rampage across three local villages in Faskari in the late hours of Monday, uh, carried the attack as confirmed by the police. The village is located close to the Nigerian Army Super Camp Shores uh, which has boundary with Zamfara State and is approximately five kilometers to Faskari local government headquarters. A resident says he's resorted to God for intervention as all measures adopted by the government to stop banditry and their activities has not yielded any result. Quite a development in that state. Now, the Anambra State Police Command has busted a camp belonging to insurgents in agrarian community of Achala in Oka North local government area of Anambra State after a raid. The state police public relations officer says the operation was ordered by the Commissioner of Police in the state upon receiving reports of the activities of the hoodlums last Monday when they disrupted market activities in communities, ordering traders to leave the market on the pretext of the sit-at-home order. The operation recorded some success with recovery of five snatch vehicles, 300 rounds of machine gun ammunition, and 34 rounds of 7.62 millimeter ammunition or AK-47. In the meantime, the chairman of the Federal Inland Revenue Service, Mr. Zakios Adediji, has promised that the nation's tax laws will be altered in a few weeks to accommodate the new exigencies of the current times. The FIRS boss was speaking against the backdrop of calls by the Finance Committee to complete what they consider re-engineering of the tax administration in the country, largely because of the volatility of the foreign exchange rate. At the 2024 Operational Budget Defense Session of the service, the chairman of the committee, Senator Sani Uma, Musa Sani rather, says the nation has lost over 7 trillion naira in five years owing to tax waivers. New service leads a team from the agency to this interactive session with the Senate Committee on Finance over the 2024 operational budget of the service. The tax administration completely needs serious re-engineering. Nigerians at this time are facing a lot of difficulties. So when I mean Nigerians, I'm also talking about the entities. Saddled with a projected tax collection of 19 trillion naira up from 12 trillion naira, the FIRS boss unraveled plans by the service to deepen collection without augmenting taxes. Most of these taxes, because it is not well collected, is not being accounted for. So it's just creating problem for us. And also we are waiting the report of the uh, committee set up by Mr. President to actually harmonize all these taxes that at the end of the day, we won't have more than eight taxes or nine maximum that we are running both at the state and federal level. At the statutory briefing, the panel further queried the FIRS boss on the tax credit system. I had your comment a few days ago with respect to tax credit. Well, it looks like the president of the country feels that we should continue with that policy. I don't know, maybe, our, maybe they quoted him out of context. I want to seek further clarification on that because there is an abuse of that process. I said today, NNPC 
through RITC has committed 2.5 trillion to road construction in Nigeria. And they brought another one, they said they want to expand it by another 2.7 trillion. And I said, no. What I've said, which Mr. President has approved, is that all the one that we have in pipeline, we will complete it. But it's not expandable. Tax holidays, tax suspensions, and even the incentives that we use in tax, like the road infrastructure, we need to look at it seriously and possibly suspend such abuse due to this abuse, suspend tax waivers and substitute it with a rebating system because this country has lost more than, more than 17, uh, 17 million trillion in five years due to tax waivers and tax holidays. Meanwhile, the Senate committee is urging the FIR's boss to consider reviewing VAT and augmenting its tax collection to 30 trillion naira when the required measures are put in place. Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. Now, that is the foundation to the conversation we have. The nation is trying to do all it can to just generate as much money as possible, shore up revenue, ramp up production, block leakages, because revenue has always been our challenge and the country is doing is uh, trying to do all it can to make sure all of this is happening with the challenges we face on both the fiscal and the monetary side. And I'm being joined on the program uh, by the chairman, House Committee on Customs, Mr. Leke Abejide. He joins us from Abuja studio. Mr. Abejide, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for coming through because I know that we had to pull you out of plenary. So let's see how we can uh, have as uh, concise conversation as possible so you can get back to plenary. But let's begin with what's been happening across the country. Just yesterday, we saw the hunger protest in Ibadan. That was preceded by the ones in Lokoja, Mina, Suleja, Kanu, I think Sokoto, and some other places. Uh, what's your immediate reaction to some of this development occasion? Uh, by the economic policy of the federal government. Well, thank you so much. Um, the issue of demonstration on hunger and whatever, and blaming the current president is very unfortunate. As at the time this president took over in May 29, all the farmers they were already expecting harvest, they are finishing, they are finished the planting, planting season. Even especially yam was also matured for harvest as at that time. Corn, or that maize, was also, in fact, we started harvesting maize, we started eating it as at May 29. So beans and all other farm produce were already matured in the farm. So you cannot blame him for that, it is a mistake of the administration before him. There is nothing he can do now, except, except the plan that is on ground to start doing uh, dry season farming, which is going to be his own uh, first program. And <coughs> the first budget he is going to implement was just passed. The beginning of this year was signed first day of this year, and the implementation has not even fully started because the 2023 budget is still running to 31st March 2024. So I, 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 I you know, I, I appreciate what uh, the government is doing, and I also pity the masses who are suffering. But what I want to say is just to appeal for our people, that this government cannot do any magic now, except it is given some time to correct the wrongs. And even though when you correct the wrongs, it, the profit or the, the fruit or the low-hanging fruit cannot come immediately. There is nothing he can do now than what he's doing that maybe assist the state government. And the state government have been giving a lot of money. The allocation has doubled. They need to come out to assist the federal government so that the people in their state can feel the impact. If we are just looking onto the federal government alone, 
federal government alone cannot solve this problem. And even though it's going to solve the problem, it's not now. It is still going to take like six months. This I can tell you. So people are protesting as if this current president was the one that was there when planting season of plastic took place. No one at all. Let us reason. Are you it saying that? It was somebody else that was there who was supposed to have encouraged the farmers and but, for us to have a bumper harvest by now. Honorable Abejide, uh, so are you saying for the people? nothing we can do now than the palliative that the government has for the masses. That's okay, Honorable Abejide, if I may button, if I may button, uh, I think there's a consensus as to the fact that all the leading candidates in the last election had agreed, most of them, uh, that they will remove the subsidy. So the challenge and the argument right now is how and the management of the process. Couldn't it have been done in a better way so that even though the people will feel the pain, which is necessary for this kind of reforms, it wouldn't have been as bad as this? Yes. I agree that all the candidates then said they will remove subsidy. And this president came the first day and said the profit, uh, subsidy is gone. Because there was no provision in the budget of 2023 for, 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 for subsidy. But if you look at it, if somebody, I was looking, I was watching an elder statement in Politics Today's program yesterday. He was saying he doesn't know where the money saved from the subsidy removal has gone. Can't he see that allocation to the state has been doubled? This is where the money has gone. It is now the state government that's to, for, for able to complement the federal government to make sure the money that is being given to them is being spent for the, for, for, for the citizens of their states. So, so the big question, Honorable Abedjide, if I may put this, so that... want to deceive ourselves, let me learn, let me learn. Okay. If I want to deceive ourselves, I have been in Abuja now going to eight years. I have never seen Abuja transformed like this. You can come here and see what is happening on the roads. In Abuja, the road that have been abandoned for years. No, they have been done. Everywhere in Abuja you can see road. And not only in Abuja, in many places All in right. the country. Honorable Abedjide, why I was botting in? But as I said, the problem we are facing now in this country needs time. All right, why I was botting in? Because we don't have so much time. So I want to take as many questions as possible. So quick one. Now you're saying the allocation has increased. As we know, FAC has increased. Loads of money going across to the state. In specifics, what do you expect the states to do? Because they are listening, because everybody's trying to look for a solution. People are saying short-term palliatives, this stop gap, this ad hoc measure is unsustainable. It will move the needle. So if you were to advise your state governor, Usman Dodo, or other governors, now your money has, monies have increased, what exactly should they be channeling the monies to to impact the people and cushion the impact of this hardship? Because of the sh Go ahead, please. I cannot hear the last part of his question. Okay. Uh, because did you hear what I said? Show, people are hungry. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, I can yes, hear I part can. of your question that what advice would I give to state governor, especially my governor in Cookie State? Now that the location has doubled, it is expected, it is expected that the salaries of the workers in the state is increased because of the inflation. You know, during inflation period, the fixed salary earner suffers. They suffer more because their salary has not increased and the prices of items in the market are increasing daily. So definitely, there is need, out of this increment in their allocation, there is need to increase the salary of these local government workers who are in the majority. There is need to increase the, 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 the salaries of the state workers as well, and then also make provisions for the households that you know that are vulnerable in your state with this money. Because now, even though you say, okay, you want to go to a farm, you can't plant today, it will mature today, and then you start reaping today. So before, to, to, for this, before the period that we will go into mechanized farming, this, I, this is what I expected the state government to be doing. So, and again, more importantly, what we are having, the problem we are having now is issue of food. So every state government now should have farm settlements where they will cultivate arable crops. That is crops that can mature 
within a year that can feed their citizen. Like they can cultivate corn, which can be used to, to, for so many things. Uh, sesame seed, millet, yam even, cassava. These are things that I expect state government to be preparing to get against future occurrence of this type of nature. So right. out of the abundance of money going to them, they should start thinking this way. That's the only way out. Food importation will not help us. Okay. All right, let, let, let's, let's now come to the committee you share, which uh, you chair, rather, which is the customs uh, in the House. So let's, let's talk about some of the concerns we're having as well, which affects our revenue, because if things are smuggled across border, it also affects how much we ramp up as a, as a nation in terms of revenue. Our, our, border, our borders, they are quite porous. What is the House doing to ensure that as we get into 2024 further and through this administration, this idea, this notion that we talk, this statement we always make about border being porous um, begins to be a thing of the past. It's what enforcement, what policies are being brought into play to ensure that uh, we secure our border so that we don't have these smugglers, you know, messing things up for our economy. Yeah, thank you. I will answer that question, but let me see this. And the issue of importation and the issue of uh, issue of uh, changing of exchange rate in the system. I moved a motion last week. And then by this week, when the vote and proceeding is out, we will write to civilian governor, we will write to minister of finance, we will write to customer general of custom. They will come to us. What I expect, I'm an economist myself, what I, <coughs> I expect is that they are super the exchange rate for, for custom duty in the system. This will help us to reduce this gallop of inflation and people that are changing prices every day in the market. Then coming to the porous borders, um, in, in uh, Night Assembly, we were learning for what they call e-custom, modernization of customs. That is, custom will now deploy drones, artificial intelligence, to border areas where human beings cannot access. So that they monitor the activities of smugglers and see them coming in. Even before they come in, they will see them and they know how to get them arrested. So this, uh, without deploying technology into this, I don't think we can go anywhere. And part of those things that customs need are still pending in 2023 budget. It's part of what I'm telling Control Again of Customs. There's need for you to get this thing implemented. And some of these obstacles they are having is in their new act. Whoever it gave them, because of the sensitive nature of their job, it gave them power to superintend over some of their projects so that they can do it faster and help us block all these leakages. Let us I talk to you. Some of those items have not been approved. It's still there in the 2023 budget. So they are right. not getting their funding easily no, imp uh, no, implemented. And part of of the problem is they have to go to Ministry of Justice for agreement, they have to do that. So there's so much of bureaucracies blocking right. them. But in the only two way, they are doing it. Right. Another thing they can do is to deploy scanners. Scanners into all, all these border stations. Before we have them being managed by Kotetna. So even though if you are smuggling arms and you conceal it, the scanner will show you that this you have in your, in your luggage and they will Pull it down. But ordinary eye, naked eyes, cannot get all this. So this is the problem we are facing in custom, and I pray uh, it will be done with speed. Honorable Lekia Abejide is the chairman of the House Committee on Customs. I wanted to have your take uh, on a particular issue, but until we're totally out of time, which was uh, a proposal by Olisa Gbakuba, senior advocate of night. If you can answer it in 30 seconds. seconds, if you can answer it in 30 seconds, in trying to stop leakages in our system, which is part of the corruption we deal with, Olisa Bakoba, senior advocate of Nigeria, has proposed that we should ensure that all MDAs and all parastatals of government should stop collecting revenue, and it should be domiciled with a, a new creation called the National Revenue Agency. NEMASA, uh, Customs, everybody should stop collecting revenue. Do you agree? 30 seconds. Yeah, I don't agree with that of custom. I don't agree with that of custom. You see, to collect custom revenue, you need to train an expert. You know, 
before you can know the tariff and get to know how it operates, it takes very long time. If you just bring up, it happened before during a bacha time, when they brought a, a, an accounting firm to be doing that for custom and other agencies, but they failed. So custom are personally trained for trade facilitation and, co and revenue collection. So, and some of this revenue, you cannot collect it with ease. Some of them, you have to use force. Some of them, you have to you know, those people that are smuggling, they know the way they do it, but it's only for right. them that can understand the terrain and know right. how to get the revenue back to government. I, I, must, I must thank you so much, Lekia Bejide, the Chairman House Committee on Customs. Thank you for keeping to time. And I appreciate your coming out to plenary so we can allow you to go back to plenary to contribute to national development. Thank you for coming. Thank you. We're going on a quick break now. When we come back, we'll bring you the other stories we have for you, including the controversy in the Labour Party with a response by the Labour Party over uh, some concerns raised by one of his aspirants. We'll bring you that story. Join us again. Welcome back. The leadership of the Labour Party in Edo State has dismissed allegations of lack of preparations and transparency leveled against them by one of its aspirants, Mr. Olumide Akbata, the former NBA president had written to INEC, notifying them of concerns ranging from shoddy preparations and lack of transparency, which the party in a statement has denied. The Labour Party Publicity Secretary, Mr. Samu Ruapa, says its release of guidelines and schedules clearly captured the fact that the World Congresses in the 192 areas will hold at the World Headquarters while stating that the candidates who withdrew from the exercise were not genuine members of the Labour Party. The party assures a free, fair and credible exercise at both the World Local Government and State Congresses. As a matter of fact, that World Congress is going on for ad hoc for delegates. Now, let's move on. Now, the APC Governorship Primary Election Committee, headed by Governor Hopu Zodima, uh, of Imo State has been commended by a group for transparency demonstrated in the conduct of the exercise. The group, known as the APC Renewed Hope Coalition in Edo State, uh, passed a vote of confidence on the committee and urged members of the party to work together in their quest to take, to take Edo State to greater heights. We unequivocally passed A vote of confidence on the Governor Zodima led electoral committee for conducting a free, fair, and credible primaries. The emergence of House of Representative member Dennis Idaosa as the winner of the APC primaries in Edo State is a testament in APC's commitment to promoting excellence and competence in governance. It is worthy to know that APC is one in Edo State, and there is no division. And same with our primary youth and women of the APC thronged the party secretariat in Benin City, the state capital, in protest against the outcome of Saturday's primary election, which purportedly produced three winners. The group who removed furniture and other items from the secretariat and promised to camp outside the facility for the next seven days also alleged sabotage on the part of the state executive which they claim had received financial induce, inducement, allegedly, to counter the election committee's declaration. We all voted with our registration. Yes. We cast yes. our vote yes. for Dennis Idaosa. Yes. Since they are trying to sabotage the youth, we will not allow it. And I'm a youth leader for God's sake. Yes, sir. The person that just won this primary is just 43 years. Yes. yes. Youth of love. Youth this of is love. what we have been crying for. Yes. And God, God Almighty has done it. Yes. Any human being that wants to change it, we will tell the youth as 75% when it comes to election. Yes. And I want to send my message to the National Working Committee. If you people in State Working Committee can disobey the National Working Committee, they need to be they need to be suspended. 
Well, that exercise that happened on Saturday is going to generate more talking points. At the end of that exercise, about three to four people are claiming victory with different numbers as outcome of the vote scored controversy over a venue who has the right to declare the winner and more, 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 and more, and all of that. But hey, that's politics. And that's it on the program. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jeffrey Ozama. You've been served on Lunchtime Politics.